Okay, are you guys ready? Leola is up tonight, and I'm going to talk to you guys. Okay, after the last video that I did, I said I read everybody's messages, and I took the time to really, you know, look at everybody. You all can see I answered everybody back. But I wrote some things down because I said to myself, it's very important that I talk to you all and let you know more. And I'm going to talk to you guys until the book comes out. But I got a little, little list here that I'm going to go over. And I got so much mail. Everybody wants to know this, that, and that. And I can't give out everything because, you know, otherwise, what's the purpose of a book? But I'm so ready to be done with this and I'm ready to get this off of my chest, out of my hair. And I'm just ready. So um, I don't mind talking and we're going to talk. Um, my God, I got so much. Okay. One of the things that I wanted to talk about first was the fact that, yes, I said Whitney had no drugs in her system because the coroner... When they did the autopsy, they said that she had like, it was a minute amount in her system. And, you know, the coroner gave a number um, of, and I forget what the number was, eight, oh God, don't get me to lying, but it's a small amount when my son looked it up, because my son is, both of my sons are wise. I have two sons that are very wise. Um, but one of my sons told me, he said, Mommy, it's not even, it's not even enough to harm a baby. It was like just a drop of, of something. And it could be, I was thinking in my mind, maybe residue from long time ago, or, or it could be something that somebody tried to give Whitney. You understand what I'm saying? Because we all know that Whitney was clean. And it's it's a possibility that um, whoever was around her tried to slip her something in her drink or food. And then she realized that, you know, they were trying to give her something. And um, that, could, that could very well be the whole reason why she was looking for folks and 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 um, trying to find folks. I don't know, but it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. But the fact of the matter is, Whitney did not have drugs in her system. She didn't. She didn't have enough drugs in her system to harm a baby. So let's 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 get that straight. Yes, the coroner uh, noted that there was a small amount. Now, as far as the pharmaceutical medicine that was in her, let me tell you this, and you all listen to me good. Don't even get it twisted because even when Whitney was alive, I know, I used to, let me tell you how much control Whitney gave me over her life when I was employed by her because I was employed by Whitney. And the only reason Pat was with her when that night, that those pictures that you all see surfing around the media the night before Whitney was found and you see Pat Houston with her. Whitney never really had Pat with her, but I had stopped working for Whitney because I had gotten married to um, my dear friend whom I love so much. Um, minister uh, Rahman, he's a minister in the Nation of Islam. And I had gotten married to him and he said he did not want me working anymore. So that's what stopped me from working with Whitney and I had to please my husband. Um, and we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm going to do a video on that because Whitney um, is responsible for that marriage. She really loved my ex-husband, uh, Rock. But um, what I'm trying to say is when I was employed by her and Whitney was um, getting her medicine from her doctor, I would call and I could call at any time and say, hey, Whitney needs this and that to, at the doctor's office. 
and they would fill, get her, uh, put her a prescription in at the pharmacy from me, just by me calling. Okay, and so I knew what she was taking and what she did. And most of the medicine Whitney wasn't even taking all the time. Trust me, a lot of medicine Whitney did not even take. It was just piling up on her her uh, counter. So whatever was whatever they said they found in her system, okay, pharmaceutical medicine, that's fine. But there was no drugs in her system. There was nothing in her system that could kill her. That's what I'm trying to get to you guys. So stop saying that. You don't have to say, well, the coroner said she had drugs in her system. Study. Look, look that up. Go back and look at what that coroner said she had and check the record on that. Because the amount is so small and minute, like just like the coroner said. It's nothing to even talk about. It couldn't even harm a baby. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by her not having no drugs in her system. There was none in there to kill, to kill her. Okay, I'm done with that part because she had no drugs in her system. Again, um, some of you wanted me to answer some questions, so I'm going to. And then, um, what is your name? I, um, I told you. You emailed me and asked me would I do a video on, I think your name is Dina, Dina Jones, Dina Jones, is that you, Dina Jones, Dina Jones, yep, Dina Jones, um, I'm gonna, you asked me to do a video on Nick Gordon, um, what happened to Nick, and do I believe he was murdered, I can answer that right now, no. I know he was murdered. Not just believe. I know that Nick was murdered. Okay. Nick was a young boy. You know, very few people. And let me say this to you guys. Because I got a book out. And um, it's about my life. It's my life story. And in the past, when I was a teenager. And I'm, I'm way past a teenager. I did drugs in my life. I, I, um... I indulged into drugs, and I knew what it was like to do drugs. I mean, there's a lot of people that have. I come from that era, that world, and I'm not ashamed to say it because I'm free of that today. But I never overdosed. I never, I never knew many people to overdose. You don't just overdose off drugs. So don't always believe that. You know, when they put stuff in the media and say somebody overdosed, no. Mm -mm. nobody's foolish enough to just overdose themselves. You know, that stuff is unheard of. So, no, Whitney did not overdose, okay? And um, I wanted to say that, but Dina Jones, no, Nick did not, uh, he did not, over, I don't believe he overdosed. I believe somebody killed him and silenced him because like I told you all, when Nick was, um, when he revealed and he said, when we had him on tape, my nephew Gerard Brown called him to get to see what he was going to say and had him on the phone. He was like, oh, I'm not going down for Pat. I am not going down for Pat on this one. I saved her with Whitney. Uh-uh. I'm not going down for Chrissy. I'm not going. He was scared because he knew what he had done to Chrissy. You know, he knew what he had done to Chrissy, and that boy panicked. He panicked. So, yes, I believe that Pat had him silenced because she probably figured that he would talk. When I did my interviews, I did interviews after interviews with different uh, media people and told them certain things, but they would never, ever play it. They would edit that out. That's why I don't like doing interviews. If you're going to edit what I say, don't interview me. If you don't want the truth. But um, we'll, we'll get to that. I got so much to say to y'all. Y'all just don't know. It's just a lot. Um, oh, as far as Pat wearing Whitney's clothes. 
Yes, and somebody said, somebody made the comment that, uh, well, Pat can't fit Whitney's clothes. She's much bigger than her. Yes, she is. But Whitney had big coat, like Whitney's fur coats were big. Whitney also had other clothes that she had in her closet that, yeah, Whitney was small. But, you know, when you're an entertainer, you get clothes from all over the world, sponsors. When I was on tour with Bobby, I was my brother Bobby's backup singer um, from 92 to 94, the Humping Around World Tour. I sung backup for him. And there were times that sponsors would come, whether we were overseas or in the country, sponsors would come, I, you know, I don't know, Nike, Reebok, I'm just naming some right off the top, that would come and give you bags of clothes for free. So I'm sure Whitney Houston got a whole bunch of free clothes. Her closet was full. So to answer your question, it ain't about whether she's her size or not. Pat and Gary stole a lot of stuff from Whitney. Yes. And like I said, when her body was found in the hotel and my nephew was sitting there trying to console Chrissy, she had fell on the floor in front of them. Uh, Pat and Gary kept stepping over them, he said, instead of them helping him pick Chrissy up. She's hysterical. She just found out her mother was gone. And she like fainted into Gerard's arms. And he, she's falling on the floor. Pat and Gary are right there. Won't even help pick her up. They so busy staging the scene at the hotel. Running back and forth. Taking stuff out of the room. And putting other stuff in. See they staged that room so that when the, the authorities got there. They wanted that room to look a certain way. You understand? Yes, they did this. And it wasn't nothing new because we knew Whitney, Whitney had plenty of things stolen from her. And she told us out of her own mouth, it was, it was Pat and Gary mostly that was stealing from her. Um, and, 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 and you all remember when Pat's daughter Rhea had on Whitney's wedding ring that my brother, boy, let me tell you something. I better not catch nobody with that ring. And Bobby, if you are listening to this video, get your ring, brother. Get your ring, Bobby. You paid a lot of money for that ring. There's no way that Pat and them should have that, that ring. That's Whitney's wedding ring. Raya had it. She was on a uh, line somewhere. I don't know, Facebook or TikTok or Instagram, somewhere like that. They said, showing off the ring. Whitney's wedding ring. See, Pat and Gary took that from Whitney. That was probably one of the things that she, her and Gary took out of that room. But I'm just saying, you guys, Whitney was not on drugs. Please believe me. Okay, she was not on drugs. When when them authorities got there and they took her autopsy and all that, that's why it's, it, go look at the autopsy. It says very little drug was in her system. But yet, they found something in the room. And I believe Pat and them put that there so that it could look like she, because see, yeah, that makes sense. Because if you go and plant something or put something in somebody's drink of food, you're expecting when the autopsy's taken, they're going to find something in her system because we spiked her drink or whatever. And then you, you put stuff in the room to make it look like that. So when they do their report, they can say, well, you know, there was, there was some drugs in the room, you know, a little bit. But I think if I remember, they said a beer or something like that. But I'm just saying, they staged that room, you guys. They staged it. Yes, they did. And you know that you cannot do that. You cannot do that. All these things that they've done and got away with. And then she sits on Oprah and says she didn't answer Whitney's calls all that day. And Whitney was doing something. Pat, that's when I knew you was lying. When you said that Whitney was doing something for your uh, P. Mary, whatever candle, uh, uh, candle thing that you have. I forget the name of your candle uh, company. So all of a sudden you got a candle company, Pat. 
and Whitney was going to do an infomercial for you? Are you serious? Let me tell you something, world. Please believe me as God is my witness. Whitney would never do nothing like that for that. No, she would not. She would not. That was a story. See, we knew Whitney. Whitney, we, we knew. Everybody knows this. Whitney fam Whitney's family knows this. And another thing, somebody asked me about Kim Burrell. They asked me, was she really Whitney's friend? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to say nothing bad about nobody. Because I don't, I don't like doing that. But at the same time, Kim, if you were such a friend to Whitney, you know, you know that what I'm saying is real about Whitney and Pat. So why aren't you saying something? Why are you letting Pat get away with this? Why, sister? Is it that you just don't want to get involved? And if that's the case, okay. But at the end of the day, Nippy is gone. Whitney's gone, sister. And so they did something to her. Yes, they did. So, I mean, and you see Pat in the media lying about being her manager. You know Pat was never her manager. Everybody in my family knows that. My brother Bobby knows that. My brother Tommy. Mama Sissy. Whitney's family. Everybody knows that. So why aren't Whitney's friends stepping up to say something? And maybe you guys, I'm not holding it against you, though. I'm not, Kim. I'm not. I'm just, somebody asked me that question. And so I just, you know, that's how I'm going to answer it. I mean, my thing is, you know, the truth is the truth. At the end of the day. But, um, no. No, 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 no. No. We need to fight for Whitney and Chrissy. We really do. Because that was so unjust, what they did to them. Um, how did Pat get all of Whitney's belongings? Because, let me tell you all something. Pat and Gary followed Whitney and Bobby. Now that I look back on Whitney and Bobby's life and their marriage... Whitney got married to my brother and moved from New Jersey to Atlanta. Newlyweds, they come here. Here come Pat and Gary following them. Who does that? Who does that? See, so they had their eyes on Whitney all this time. They knew what they were going to do. That's how I see it. They followed her. Mm -hmm. And I can remember when I got custody of Bobby Christina and I had to um, take her to school. Oh, that's another thing. Pat, that, that um, you guys go look up um, the Grinch that stole Chrissy. Jonathan Houston put that out on, uh, I think you could just, just Google it, but it's on Facebook. It's on everywhere. It's everywhere. Pat is caught talking about Whitney and Bobby Christina really bad after Whitney died. Yep. And she says something like, um, oh, I don't want to, we don't want to be like her. They're, they're dead. They checked out. And I mean, just her whole attitude. But what was I trying to tell you? Oh, in that, in that, um, in that, taping she says that Bobby my brother never and Whitney never never took Chrissy to school you liar Pat you ain't never took Bobby Christina to school so why would you lie like that whoever you was talking to you was lying I was the only one that had authority when Bobby and Whitney didn't do it Bobby took his daughter to school first of all Bobby Christina was homeschooled Yes. Yes. And let me tell you how Bobby Christina got to public school. Now, let me talk to you all and tell you the real deal. Because Pat Houston is not being straight up.
talking about my brother never took his daughter to school. How dare you? Bobby Christina was homeschooled when I had full custody of her. Okay, like I told you all, it was a court order, full custody of Bobby Christina. And one day, and her teacher would come in and, and um, you know, homeschool her. But I got upset one day because um, I, I, I saw Bobby Christina playing with two, um, well, she was playing with doll babies. And the doll babies, two were, two were white, I believe, and one was black. And she was saying, with playing with the doll, saying, "We don't want to play with you." To the black doll, and I was like, "Chrissy, no." So I decided when her teacher came back, I asked her. I said I was very concerned because I'm in the nation of Islam, and so I told Whitney. I talked to Whitney and said, "I don't like that." I don't. I said, I want my niece to learn about her, um, you know, her, her own people and herself, you know, because I told Chrissy, don't do that. Why are you doing that to the black doll? You know, because it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's the mentality. You understand what I'm saying? So um, Whitney allowed me to talk to her teacher and I asked her teacher to teach her some black history and, you know, so one thing you know, led to another or whatever, but we ended up putting Bobby Christina into public school. And then I took her to school every morning. I would take her to school and pick her up. Yes. Pat Houston, I don't remember a day. First of all, you didn't even come to Whitney's house, Pat, that much. She didn't even want you in the house. Anytime you called, she gave you that. Come on, I don't want to talk about that stuff. But you need to stop this lying. Stop it. No. Bobby and Whitney, I, I, in spite of, and I don't care what they did, they took care of their child. Bobby Christina was well taken care of. So, Pat, you didn't do anything for Chrissy. So stop it. My God. But what she's trying to do is she was trying to make everybody think that she was something special. And she really wasn't. And I'm not proud to, to, to report that or reveal that or say that. I'm not proud to say that, but it's the truth. And she's out here lying. I had to take Bobby Christina to school. I had to take her to her doctor's appointments. Because the court said that Bobby and Whitney couldn't. I was the only one that could. And Pat was, she could not do anything for, for Bobby Christina. No, she couldn't even come near Chrissy. Please, you ain't never took her to school. She was homeschooled up until, and then when she did go to school, she went to school across the street. Right directly across the street from the subdivision. So Pat, stop it with all the lies. Pat is over the estate because uh, Mama Sissy placed her there. And in my opinion, Mama Sissy has two sons, Michael and Gary. But, you know, in everybody's family, we have people have drug problems. And I believe that is why Mama Sissy didn't want Michael or Gary over anything because of that. You know, but um, yes, they, because of of the, maybe the, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not certain, but I do know this: Mama Sissy placed her there and thought she could trust Pat, but I don't believe she trusts her as of today. I really don't. But it's too late. Everything is done. And Gary and Michael, if you are listening to me right now. Please watch yourself. Watch yourself, Gary, Michael, and Bobby, because Donna, Pat, and Alicia, they have a plan. Yes. Trust and believe me, they do. Brothers, they do. Um, I'm going to do a video on, somebody asked me to do one on the um, Tyler Henry the interview, the, the um, medium, Hollywood medium that did that interview with my brother. 
<laughs> Bobby, I sat there listening to that man. Don't you know that everybody knows my mother was a school teacher? Everybody knows that my, especially those in the industry, they study us. Come on. He knew my father was a construction worker. He knew my father smoked. My father talked about that all the time when he was a, Bobby, daddy traveled with Bobby. So daddy had the chance to tell people that. You know, he was a construction worker all his life. Everybody knew that about Bob Brown. Bobby should have got the message when Tyler, I watch people, you all. I Don't nobody get by me. I, I'm very observant with people. I see you when you don't see me looking at you. I see you. And when he was walking up to Bobby's door, he was talking. He was saying, oh, I, I didn't even know. When he got in the, as he was going to Bobby's house, he said, I didn't even know Bobby Brown. I didn't even, I didn't know who he was. Oh, really? You know, people, people really, you know, they, they, they tickle me when they say that. You knew who Bobby Brown was. Whether before he married Whitney or after, but you heard of Bobby Brown. That was, I, I don't think that that, that was a, a proper reading and I don't believe in sitting in front of anybody like that and having them read you anyway. But I mean, you know, it is real. Some people can do that, but God has not given people permission to do that. So for that particular reason right there, because you can be tricked. And Bobby needs to know that, you know, everybody knew daddy was a construction worker, Bobby. Everybody knew mommy was a teacher at our school. So... You know, those are the only two things he told told you, really, basically. And that daddy said he loved you. Of course he loved you. But they knew Bobby. They knew Pop. Pop was on the road with you. So they knew how he was and how he acted and everything. And they could put two and two together. Your father wanted you to know that he loved you. Yeah, every every parent says that about their child. I mean, I, I didn't, everything Tyler, uh, uh, Tyler Henry said was was fake and phony to me personally. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, what else was I gonna talk about? I got some more stuff, you guys. Okay, I talked about the drug in Whitney system. Oh, ain't no drug dealer killed Whitney, you guys. No. No, and all this stuff about I don't know nothing about. Um, somebody coming up the back stairs or something like that. I don't, I never heard anything like that. No. So I don't know anything about that, but that was going around. People were saying that Whitney owed a drug dealer. Who? What drug dealer did she owe? Uh-uh. I doubt it very much if it was a drug dealer that killed Whitney in that hotel room. No, no, mm-mm. Sorry, I don't believe that one. Whitney was clean. She was clean. And let me tell you all this. There is a brother in the nation of Islam. His name is Brother Curtis Muhammad. And my mother loved him like he was her son. My mommy loved Curtis. And he was a very good friend of, of, of the families. I brought him in. But we ha Bobby hired him to do security. And he was the best security that Bobby and Whitney had. I mean, come on, Nation of Islam. You know, he was, he did a daggone good job. Well, somebody plotted to have him moved. And they were messing with his paychecks and everything. Just, you know, trying to do things, um... And wanted him out of the way, I guess, so that Pat's brother can come in. Because now that Whitney's gone, I'm sitting here looking at all of this. And it seems like to me, at that hotel that day, uh, Ray, the security, Pat's brother, he was the one that told me Whitney's room looked like a tornado hit it. So where was you at? Where was you at? And then Pat's um, 
I think it's her niece, Mary. I think Mary's Pat's niece. All these people that are related to Pat are working around Whitney at this time. Somebody calls Whitney's niece in New Jersey. Oh, Whitney was at the hotel for two weeks prior to being found. Not after the body was found. Prior to being found. And somebody called her niece and said, something fishy is going on at that hotel with your aunt. They're doing something to her. You need to call her and get her out of there. So I don't know what they saw. But we seen Whitney's behavior, right? And I got a bombshell for you all in this video. I got something to tell you all. I'm telling you, I'm coming. I'm coming. And I just started my YouTube. So give me time because I'm working. I'm doing so much. I'm working on my own show and I got a lot going on. So bear with me, but I'm going to be loading up videos every, every, and I'm going to get to the point where I'm loading two or three, four, five up a day. Okay. But, um, I got a bombshell to drop before I'm going to make it the last thing that I talk about. So you all get comfortable because I'm getting ready to drop something on you about Ray J. Um, what was I saying? I got so much, um, but I got so much stuff. It don't matter what I say tonight. I still got a whole bunch, but I can't give you everything because of the book. I'm just giving you bits and, and pieces, but, um, what was I saying? Um, no drug dealer killed Whitney. Oh, I was saying that Pat hired all her family to be around Whitney. You understand what I'm saying? And then Whitney, this happens to her. On, on their watch. Ain't nothing never happened to Whitney on our watch, the Browns. Never. Mm -mm. Never. The only thing that happened that I don't like was, and I, and, I, and I had to talk about this anyway. Somebody had a, several emails with, um, not emails, I saw posts with people that said, um, isn't she the sister that put the picture out on Whitney. No, that is not me. I'm Leola. My sister Tina did that. And I'm talking about that in my book. Okay? I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I'm going to talk about it in my book. But that's not me. No, I would never do anything like that. No. So no, I'm not that sister. Okay? So let's get that right. Um... Okay, so I, I talked about that. I touched on that. No. No drugs in Whitney's system. No, not at all. Yes, and um, I talked about Pat wearing her clothes because somebody was saying uh, she couldn't fit Whitney's clothes, but you don't know Whitney's clothes. Whitney has a lot. Whitney has jewelry. There's a lot of belongings that, uh, that Whitney has. That, are, that I'm sure are missing. We got stuff missing. My whole wardrobe, my whole wardrobe that was in Whitney and Bobby's house is gone. When Bobby and Whitney divorced, I went back to that house and I guess Whitney uh, had Pat as the cleaner, cleaning up the house. My God, if I had taken pictures, you all, oil paintings of Bobby and Whitney and Bobby Christina, holes in the face and expensive stuff. I looked and couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe it. I said, why is Pat throwing away all of Whitney's good stuff? Oh my God. That, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lot, you all. It's a lot, a lot. Yeah, but I believe that that's, that's, I believe that they have been, they had plotted on Whitney from a long time ago, you all, a long time ago, Pat and Gary, because first of all, Whitney's brother Gary, they don't share the same father, mm -mm. but yet he changes his name to Houston from Garland, and so 
Pat is walking around with Whitney's name, and Whitney never liked that. She didn't. She always told us, don't you ever call her a Houston. She's not related to me. Ask my sister Tina. She'll tell you. Bobby. Bobby knows. Ask Bobby. Mm -hmm. Bobby knows. When he was going through that in the hospital with Bobby Christina, oh, yeah, Pat was telling him to stop put, spending money on his daughter. What is wrong with you? Of course somebody's going to spend every, I said, Bobby, don't you listen to her, spend every dime that you have, every penny to save your child. Mind your business. But see, the thing was, you all, she wanted Bobby Christina dead. She didn't want Bobby Christina to come home. Yes. The doctors told her she would, Bobby Christina would be fine. Dr. Jolly sat in a room and they were facing the doctors. Bobby, Pat, Whitney Security, Dr. Jolly, and the doctors. How did Pat Houston get 50-50 custody of my niece fighting her father while she was in hospice. Who did that? Who did that? You don't do that. You don't play with nobody's child like that. What if it was your child? And Dr. Jolly was highly upset because he did some things right there in their face and proved that he could bring Bobby Christina back 100%. He proved it right in front of him. And the doctors were amazed. They was like, wow, well, we're all for it. Bobby was crying. He said, please, let me let this doctor do this with my, da my daughter. Pat Houston stood up and said, no, no. This is the same doctor that she bought herbs from well, I don't know if he was the same. I know he's the same doctor that saved her brother when he had uh, heart problems. He was about to have a heart attack and Dr. Jolly saved him. And they said Pat's mother was dying of cancer or something and, and, and she got herbs to save her mother. But you won't let Bobby Christina take herbs to fix her brain. Pat Houston, you are a witch. Pat Gowan, excuse me. God is coming for you, sister. I'm sorry. He has to come for you. You have to be chastised severely for that. You murdered my niece. You told those doctors, and because those doctors and told my brother, there is nothing I can do because you all both have 50-50. Well, why would you take Pat's word over Bobby's if they got 50-50? Why does it have to sway to her side? And she's not even blood. That doesn't make sense. See? Oh, yes, I'm telling it on you. I'm telling it. Because you shouldn't have had 50-50 against my brother anyway. Why was you and Mama Sissy fighting for that? Why? Because you wanted that estate. Come on, let's tell it. You didn't want my niece to get out of that, make it out of hospice and be over her mother's estate. And I told everybody, and I'm talking about you in the book, to me, in my opinion, you all acted like you all hit the lottery in hospice. And Pat, you know something else that I know? Before, before Bobby Christina came to that hospice, Ask my sister Tina and them. I told my whole family, I said, I would, I will bet you. God gave it to me. I promise you, on everything that I love in this world, God revealed it to me that you were gonna place her where you placed her. Out of all the hospices in Georgia, big old Georgia, you place her in the hospice down the street from your house. And I knew it. Mm -hmm. God told me, he said, because you wanted easy access to her. So that you can get there in a hurry if need be. Going back and forth to see Chrissy, to do whatever it is that you, you all did to her. 
because you surely did something to my niece. I know you did. And let me tell you all something. Everybody's talking about, I better shut up, or somebody's coming for me, or whatever. Look, let me tell you something. I don't serve that kind of God, you all. I don't. I do not serve that kind of God. Leola is not fearful of anything under this sun, but Allah whose proper name is Master Farad Muhammad. I'm so sorry. I'm just not scared of nothing but him. And if anything is going to happen to me, well, it would be by the will of Allah because he is who I depend on to guide and protect me. And I believe I could be wrong, but I don't think so. God knows that I don't think so. Black people. We have to stop being so scared. You all got to know that God will have your back whenever you do something out here. We have to know this. And I'm putting my life on the line because I know that Allah is God and I believe in him. And I know that he's going to protect me. I'm crying because these are tears of joy. I know that God is going to protect me because I'm telling the truth. And it's a wrongful thing that they did to my niece and my sister and my nephew. That was wrong. You don't kill somebody for their money. You don't take their lives like that. And Ray J, you tell your mother for me that I said, Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mm hmm Let's go. You think you can sue me for telling the truth? You can't do that, lady. Everything that I'm saying is true. And if it's not, well, take me to court and prove it. Prove that what I'm saying is not true. You can't do it. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. And Stacy Francis, you all, this is what I had to tell you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start crying. But, yeah. I'm sorry, you all. God, I believe, is using me as a person to stand up in this country and show us Christians, Muslims, it don't even matter who we are, white, black, whatever. God does not want you to fear anything but him, anybody but him. And we have to learn when we say we believe in God, then put all your faith in him. Try him. Try him. Stop being so scared entertainers, people that are out here and afraid. This is the hour of, this is the hour of time that we free ourselves. Our people have been suffering for 400, 500 years in this country. Don't ever be afraid of nothing or nobody. When you say you believe in God, we go to church, we go to mosque, and we say we believe in God. We come out and we tell people, well, I believe in God. I don't fear nothing, but we lie. Because as soon as a trial comes before us, we shake and buckle and, and, and we fall. We fold. No, you ain't supposed to do that. You're supposed to stand on your post and say, God, if God takes me, well, then damn it, it's my time to go. And I'm going for a good reason. But I doubt it. 
I doubt it. This is a new day, you all. This is a new day. God will protect you, but you just got to have faith in him. I ain't done nothing wrong. I ain't did nothing to nobody. Nothing. I ain't never, I've never bothered anybody. I haven't done anything to nobody. So don't come for me because I'm speaking the truth. No. It don't make no sense. It don't. You can't speak the truth. Somebody want to take your life? You done took my family's life. They gone. Anyway, excuse me. I'm sorry, you all. I'm so sorry. I had to get that out. I haven't even mourned my family members properly. I haven't. My mother, my father, my sister, first my sister, Bethy. We had relatives that left before that. My aunts, my, 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 my auntie Marie, my auntie Jean, my aunt Barbara, my mother, my sister, my father, Whitney, Bobby, Christina, Bobby Jr. I mean, my God. And this is, this, we had deaths back to back. But none of them were murdered. Like Whitney and Bobby Christina. No. I'm tired of losing people. But what I was going to, what I was going to say, what I'm going to say. I know that I'm a Rosa. Wherever you are, you're happy right now. I know you are, girl. You all know I'm a Rosa. That was on the Donald Trump. Let me get some water. That's my girl. What's up, I'm a Rosa? I hope you're looking at this video. Me and I'm a Rosa was in L.A. And I've been holding this in for forever. And she and I were both getting ready to do an interview. I was getting ready to do the Dr. Drew and I think um, Nancy Grace. She was getting ready to do the Nancy Grace show. So we were both in the um, makeup room and we were talking. And she said to me, I'm a Rosa. And she told me then, she said, Leola, you can say that I told you this. I don't even care. She was there the night before Whitney was found. When Whitney was at that party that they had all their pictures in the media saying that Whitney was drunk, walking around or, or, or drugged up. No, she wasn't. She might have had a few drinks. That was it. She was partying, having a good time. But guess what? Stacy Francis, who is a good friend of Ray J's, she got on Dr. Drew after I did my interview and pretended like Whitney and her had a beef over Ray J. As God is my witness, Amarosa told me, she said, Lily, I stood there and watched the whole entire thing. She said, that girl, Stacy Francis, Francis, is a liar. She said, she walked by Whitney and touched Whitney's breast. You nasty, pathetic woman. Why would you... Do something like that to somebody. And Whitney went off on her and said, what the hell are you doing? Don't you ever touch my body like that again. That's what Stacey Francis did. And that's why her and Whitney both were arguing. It had nothing at all to do with Ray J. And I don't know if her and Ray J plotted that idea to put that out there like that. See? Right after Whitney's body's found, 
Gotta be. It, it, it's gotta be. It can't be nothing else, Ray J. You and her did that. Yes, you did. And and, and, and I dare y'all to try to sue me over there. You can't do that. Because Amorosa was there. She was there. And I got too many witnesses that was in the room that heard her say it. So don't go bothering her. Yes. She said, you are a liar, Stacey Francis. None of that happened. It wasn't about you and Ray J. Mm-mm. Whitney did not like Ray J like that. What, Ray J, why are you trying to make people think that you and Whitney was together? Why? And I apologize for, for letting the world know that you, 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 Whitney said it like that. But she said that. She said, you was nothing more than a runner boy. I wasn't saying that to talk about you, brother. No, I was not. I was just keeping it real. Because y'all ain't going to use my sister's name in the media like that. Y'all need to stop doing Whitney's name like that. Stop making up stuff and lying on her. Because, see, God had me meet Amarosa and get that that day. Ain't that something? God had me on a journey. I, had, I was already out here investigating the case. But God didn't want you all to, God wanted you all to be busted in that line. Because that's a lie. Yes, that is 